This is Night Force Action Report for Tuesday, August 20th, 2013. From HorribleNight.com, I'm your host, Justin Lacey. And joining me tonight is Aaron McNeil. I'm back in the road, Jay. <laughs> What's going on, fella? The road's calling me back. I can't believe we're... I don't know why we're both taking a break from the row, honestly. like I don't know. Like feel, Doing these shows on Tuesdays, on game release day, is always kind of tricky about once a month there's just always one game that's just like it's, no go play that game don't go talk about video games go play that game you want to go talk about. but i got better is, things to do why am i talking to you <laughs> wasting your damn time i could be shooting stuff you're only hanging out with me because we're going to co-op after the show so exactly um but before we get to what we're playing and some game pitches what's been going on outside of games I took a trip back home to my parents, my hometown, to go to a friend's wedding. And you think all the excitement starts when you get to the wedding, but I got a new car, like I said, which means I had an old car that I need to get back to my parents. And it has engine problems and all sorts of stuff. No AC. It's August. And so, I, I being the nice guy that I am, I let my wife drive my new car. And mm-hmm. I followed her in my old car, which has just the worst timing ever and so uh it was a little shaky to start with but by the time i got to an on-ramp to the highway where traffic was kind of happening (laughs) at the top of it where the car becomes important yeah the car becomes important uh i hit 35 on the ramp i need to get to about 65 at the top of the ramp that car never went faster than 35 the entire way up it starts to shake it starts to rattle people are going to let me in and I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna die before the trip has even begun. <laughs> I, uh, you've just described several of my nightmares. I, I hate anything to do with cars and them breaking down and me not having any control over them. I can't fix it with a computer. Like, I think that's just. <laughs> I, a, I think that's a thing with our generation. I mean, well, I don't think it's like all of our generation, but like fifty-fifty. Like some of us are just kind of tech computer people yeah. like versus versus previous generations that could seem to like your dads could always you know fix your cars like they just all seem to know a little bit about them we all yeah, they all know we either know about cars or we know about computers it's rare that i know people that can that that do both i don't have time for both no. but all i knew was i knew how to curse and i knew how to beat the steering wheel <laughs> at the top of that ramp but uh i survived i made it there the beginning of the trip was the worst part and so I got to see some old friends, cool. get a nice reminder that playing games locally, I just don't do that anymore. <laughs> oh, you and mean it's like, a lot lo- more fun. like local multiplayer? Yeah, like yeah. just sit everyone in a room together. I played mm-hmm. some You Don't Know Jack. Uh, that's a game where, it's, that's like, a, I'm trying to think of a game that where you can get mad. <laughs> but You Don't Know Jack, it's like a simple, fun trivia game. But when you lose, even if kind of on pers- uh, on purpose... Getting made fun of by your friend's wife <laughs> just kind of still it boils the blood a little bit. That and, game, uh, well, that game's cheap, man. Like, there's no like it. You can be really good at it, but the way the the jack attack is set up, that's yeah, really all that matters. That's what I was explaining to my wife because uh, she gave me a little bit of grief. But I know it's playful. It was fine. The guy who beat me, he's a good friend. I wasn't mad when he laughed in my face, but for some reason, my friend's wife. Well, if they're and, all uh, ganging up on you, that's yeah, a, it's like I took the, I took the heat. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you should have done better. Should maybe I should have. Jack attack. <laughs> there were some game. funny answers in there. I just had to press the button anyway. Was that the first time you'd played like the newer versions? Uh, I owned the the Wii version. That's okay. what we played, but I haven't played it in a while. And there were episodes we hadn't played, which is good. But I didn't know the answers. I couldn't cheat my way to success. The only weird part about that game was, like, I mean, it has a lot of content, but I was always hesitant to the the way it's the way it's set up. You don't want to replay content with um with new people. Like, it, like yeah. it would it would have been really easy for me to cheat. Like, exactly playing my copy, I kind of want to just blow through it because I love the game. But if I blow through it, I won't have categories or I, I won't have um rounds yeah, of questions episodes. yeah i yeah. want to have episodes that i haven't played before to play with new friends and that kind of defeats the purpose like if i've already heard the answers uh i'm gonna be an asshole so 
Yeah, it's really like a one-time through game, and there's a good number of episodes, but I think I've maybe played a quarter of it and then hadn't touched it since. Oh. <laughs> and they put it on random, and we got lucky that hadn't played those episodes, but God, I, I, For, I wanted to slap somebody. <laughs> did you play anything else on the Wii? Verdian um, brought up that <laughs> that Wii Dare mini game <laughs> collection, and then uh, I think um, uh, Spin the Bottle just came awkward. out. Spin the Bottle just came out for Wii U. I still haven't seen Spin the Bottle. That would have just been so weird. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you could talk people into playing that, honestly, because like, you know. say it, and they think one thing, and it's going to get a certain reaction, but when they actually see it, <laughs> oh, it's it, and it becomes a completely other kind of weird. Uh, a, I don't <laughs> Be curious what type of people move forward with it that, that, aren't, that aren't gamers that already know what they're getting into. I like to mix my weird, so maybe I should check that out. But uh, other than that, there weren't wasn't a lot of gaming. There was a, a couple instances of spelunking <laughs> from my parents' place, and uh, but the highlight of the the entire time. I mean, the wedding was great. It went off well enough. But my <laughs> my give friends, it a passing I was, grade a seven. I give it a, a B minus. <laughs> but my friends and I, uh, two of us were groomsmen. One of the other was an usher. And he's like, hey, there's a place nearby, a Russian lady. She sells snow cones. They're delicious. They're cheap. Let's go get some. So in the middle of his reception, Russian snow while, cones. We're, yeah, while we're supposed to be like vandalizing his car, which we did, we sneak off in our suits, our tuxes. Mm. And we're just like, there's like kids coming and going, like adults taking their kids there. It's a Sunday afternoon. So people are very casual. And this is the second time in our friendship that all of us are dressed up nice and we just go somewhere just off the map of where we need to be. And so we're, we're talking to a Russian lady going to get some snow cones. <laughs> and she's like, Oh, you guys look so beautiful. And she, she's Russian. So, you That's know, nice. I take it as a compliment. Instead of, you know, instead of taking, no, 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 call us handsome. We're not beautiful. You know, I'm like, oh, that's nice, get a Russian su- lady. Get super offended at the snow yeah, cone lady. how dare you? Men being beautiful. <laughs> but uh, I got one called Tiger Blood. It's essentially just uh, strawberry and coconut. It was really good, but I bought it for the name only. Does she work for Charlie Sheen? Like, how is this racket run? <laughs> Russian snow cones owned by Charlie Sheen. I, I was so high when I finished it. Yeah. <laughs> I was shaking. <laughs> I don't remember what happened. Next thing I knew, I was back at home and had to go to work. And I had two porn stars for my new wives. Just... I had two porn stars, and they wanted money. Yeah. And I, t- I told them, go, go see my friends. <laughs> they took me there. Um, I had a pretty family-oriented weekend, so not much gaming for me either. Uh, but I did go to Gen Con on Friday. Um, that the big, the biggest four days in games, or I forget the name, the their slogan. But lots of uh, tabletop gaming and board gaming. Great. Um. Not usually my scene, but Josh has been talking this th- all of those games up for a couple of years now around around here, and has gotten me to try uh, a lot of games. And this is my, the second time I've gone to Gen Con, and so it was fun just wandering around trying to, you know, it's more of an observational thing for me, like the fact that we have like this major gamer convention in Indianapolis still kind of blows my mind. Like it just doesn't, it, yeah. something doesn't seem like it fits, like. When you go to Gen Con, it doesn't feel like I'm in my hometown. But when I leave, all of a sudden, all these people are in my hometown. It's just it's 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 awesome in that in that regard. Um, <laughs> so I got a couple games. Um, I think I misspoke on the podcast last week. I, I finally bought Zombicide, which is I think I've told a story about the last time I played that game. Um, and then I actually bought some X Wing miniatures for the X Wing miniatures game. And uh, those were both nice. a lot of fun. I played a, I played the Batman, I think it was Arkham City board game. And, I didn't uh, know that existed. Yeah, it's kind of cool. <laughs> it's um, You're basically, like, you're guarding the outside of Arkham City, and you have to prevent the villains from escaping. And so one of you is Batman, and the other is controlling all of the villains. Um, which there's a difference between controlling the villains and the super villains because I was worried uh, when he was setting up all of his pieces that every card he was laying down was a super villain. And I was like, that's a little bit unfair. But um, yeah. Um, so we played that, and unfortunately, uh, Batman didn't make it out alive. That was uh, that was pretty disappointing. <laughs> but uh, that was it was a fun game. And then, um, but the big thing of the weekend for me was I played my first pen and paper game. I've never played any 
D and D growing up. Have you played any? Never done that either. No. Um, my, you know, the the most experience I've had with it was that D and D community episode. So that's what I was basing yeah. basing my experience off of. But we played a uh, a game called Outbreak Undead, which is essentially Dungeons and Dragons, but a zombie focused um, version of it. Unique. Um, we've actually met the the designers of the game a couple different times. They're really cool guys. Uh, we bought the game a year ago, but hadn't ever sat down to play it, and we finally um, we finally broke it out this weekend. One of our friends set up a whole um, campaign for us, and um, he, basically the story became that we were we were all playing some game late at night in in the in the convention hall where Gen Con was, and then like the outbreak happens right outside our door, and all of a sudden we have, so we have to escape the Indianapolis Convention <laughs> Center. That is, you know, crowded with zombies and stuff happens. So um, it was kind of, it was kinda, it was topical. a cool setup. But um, the weirdest part was we played as ourselves. So, like any of these, any <laughs> of these games, you know, they give you a character and they give you your your stats. Um, and then what we quickly realized was, you know, my my character had all these stats. W- one was completely wrong. If you if anybody's seen me play any apocalyptic game um my character had a ton of empathy so i had problems like leaving people <laughs> behind which um yeah if, that doesn't watch, sound like you <laughs> no I'm, watch that payday 2 stream and tell me how much i gave a sh- gave a shit about my partners um <laughs> but um, you like you like pugs though you'll save all the dogs yes i like the pups <laughs> um so but normally if you're playing a game like this you look at your character stats like as a as a as a group and you you know, you kind of assign roles by those stats. Like the guy that's the strongest, he's probably going to be the one doing most of the, the the battle, the battle stuff. If the guy yeah. with like the highest perception, you're probably going to make him the lookout. Well, the thing was, we're playing with a group of us. We're supposed to be playing as ourselves, and essentially, the guy that you know had the lowest perception was also the like the most aggressive of us. So he's going to be the one that actually runs out. And tries to see what's going on, but he has like the weakest stats to do it. So it was an interesting, it was really an interesting contrast. I don't know if I recommend playing as yourself, but it was definitely, it was definitely weird. Because you're like, if I was playing this as the game, I would make a different decision. But if it's just me, you know, uh, fuck these guys, I'm leaving them on their own. So (laughs) (laughs) everyone dies. But we had five of us, no, four of us, no, five of us. And, um, Two, three of us made it out alive thanks to Will Wheaton coming to save the day, um, <laughs> of and his, his Hitori Hanzo sword. And then um, um, we had to leave two guys behind because they picked a fight with Will Wheaton, and so we left them. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna fight Will Wheaton, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna use that as a distraction and get out of there. So uh, that was a lot of fun. If you have any passing interest in Dungeons and Dragons, just just know there are tons of variations of of it out there, and just completely unique ones like this Outbreak Undead. And they just they released a um, a new a new version of it, an expansion called Endless Space, which essentially is Dead Space, the Dead Space version of this. Oh, so, nice. Um, so Sold. yeah, yeah. So check out Outbreak Undead. Highly, highly recommend it. But is let's, there a a stomping stat, like in the space one. <laughs> no, How well you being... stomp. <laughs> and a heavy breathing stat, and the shouting, <laughs> going crazy, but no co-op, no co-op. Um... Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> On to video games. First, new releases because I, my, we are, we are in the shit right now. Like I don't, I kind of made jokes a couple weeks ago about just like some you know really quality downloadable releases coming out but like i think from here here on out we are in trouble i think part of it is you know that holiday release schedule gets pushed back a little bit further each week so now we're into august with the holiday releases and then so many of these companies are trying to get their game out before this generation's games out before the next generation hits in november so i think that's where the crunch is coming from but um the big game we'll be talking about later um, of the week is definitely Saints Row Four. Um, definitely, but there are there are two other games on this list that I don't understand why they're coming out the same week as Saints Row Four. They're just like these games are going to eat each other alive. Uh, first of all, Splinter <laughs> Cell Blacklist. Um, I'm so yeah. curious about that. I haven't read. Have you read any reviews of that one? 
I have read reviews. I've watched a few video reviews. What are they saying? Uh, consensus seems to be that the story is not all that great, but mm-hmm. it's got some just phenomenal stealth level design and gameplay really? and, and just the way you can play through levels over and over being, you know, quiet, ghosting, or just going full on Rambo against people, which is not what Sam Fisher does. <laughs> You, but you can play it that way, so I'm interested in it. I liked Conviction, but Saints Row 4, I can't turn my back on that. Yeah, yeah. And then I think the one that's going to lose the most because of all this is the Bureau XCOM Declassified is also out this week. Yeah, that, I think that's losing already off the plate. Yeah, it sounds like it, sounds like it just it, it isn't memorable by any means, which is really kind of... I think with their setting, they could have it could have really stood out. Like I like the kind of yeah. old timey aliens, <laughs> um, but um, I think people got their uh, XCOM already, and that's the memorable one. Yeah, and so to put another XCOM out, even I will, if I, this I will, one might have been announced first, I don't know. Yeah, I forget. Yeah, this was yeah. the original XCOM shooter that was announced way before Enemy Unknown, and it kind of they kind of buried it for a while and <laughs> did some. Fancy marketing with changing the uh, the name to the bureau, but um, <laughs> uh, I mean, I it doesn't sound like anybody hates the game. They're just saying it's not no. it's not great. It's just yeah. So this is just ultimately forgettable. But you know, you can't. Then why release it today? Like it released it a month, six weeks ago, like when nothing else is out. And I don't know. I think more people would give it a shot, but there's no reason to give it I a think, shot right now. Yeah, now it's it's a wait and see. <laughs> Um, the, the next, like, the next big game that we're playing, i actually kind of surprised we talked ourselves into this, but after the show, we'll be playing some Dive Kick. Dive Kick. <laughs> the, Prepare to get kicked. <laughs> <laughs> the most straightforward fighting game you'll ever play, full of, um, I guess it's, somebody was saying it's full of inside jokes. I think all the, like, all the character designs are, are kind of referential, but, you know, yeah. one Dive Kick, you kill your opponent, so... Uh, the rounds will be quick. <laughs> like real life. <laughs> real fighting. When you do it correct. I'm only mentioning this game because I don't like the title, and I don't know why you would play it. Like, if you're didn't know, if you like me and don't know anything about it. But Hate Plus is out this week. <laughs> I can't remember, but I might have tried a game that this is maybe a sequel or a spiritual successor to. Hate but Minus. But it sounds familiar. Hel- hate Minus. <laughs> Love, love minus. <laughs> but yeah, it's like a weird relationship adventure game. Yeah. I and I... Uh, I don't even know where to take it from there. But yeah, pretty pretty story heavy then? Yeah, it's a very story heavy. You make decisions. What does your character say? It's a choose your own adventure novel for mm. people that are oh. too poor or whatever to be playing Saints Row with us. <laughs> <laughs> um, Might mag- Magic... X Legacy is out this week. Uh, I believe that's an early release. They, I think they, they actually had that at Gen Con. One of the few video games they had there. But um, if you're a Might Magic fan, you're probably insulted that um, I don't know anything about this game. So uh, neither do I. I need to read more into it. But then an expansion for Ravaged. They have their own zombie apocalypse uh, expansion now. Josh played uh, a bit of this uh, back in back in the beta. So kind of it was it was the open world car game that we were playing right before oh, Defiance yeah. came out. So, Boop, boop. Uh, I just picked up the early release of Sir, You Are Being Hunted. So I'll be streaming that sometime soon. Um, essentially, you are um, being hunted by robots in an open world setting. So, survival Sounds game. Sounds great. Yeah. But <laughs> Sounds like, tense. But lots of top hats and monocles. And, uh, they're tweed robots or something like that. So, so if we like watching you lose and die mm-hmm. over and over again, this is the game to catch. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, if you like watching me lose and die all over again, I think that's probably why you're on this channel at this point. Yeah. That's pretty much all that's I why do. I'm here. <laughs> uh, Skull Girls is out for PC. Um, another fighting game. It's weird, weird that that's out the same week as Dive Kick. They're almost like, yeah. I don't know, they're they're more indie fighters. You'd think they wouldn't. Um, cannibalize each other a little bit like that. Maybe it's because it's already out on what 360. Yeah, yeah. So um, who who cares? Skullgirls. 
the the artwork reminds me a lot of um, Dragon's Crown and that it's beautiful but also kind of off putting by some of the character designs. Yeah, it's a it's a little bit like that. There's like a nurse or something that does some yeah. weird stuff with syringes. <laughs> <laughs> That's as much as I know. The Summer of Arcade release on XBLA is the HD remake of Flashback. Uh, I streamed um, the Another World slash Out of This World, which I believe is the prequel to Flashback. Um, oh, I didn't know that. So I'll have, to, I'll have to check that out, see if that's worth playing. Um, I, I, I played the hell out of Flashback on the Super Nintendo, so... Um, that I may or may not go back to that. And then, so there's this... The Wii U on the eShop released three Street Fighter 2 games. They're all great. like five bucks a piece or ten. Not I think great. they're all five bucks a piece. <laughs> and I, I, don't, I don't understand. Like, they, So they've got Street Fighter 2 World Warrior, which I believe was the original. Then you've got Hyper yeah. Fighting, and you've got New Challengers. I don't know where Turbo is because that was, that was my jam. That's the one you'd think. Yeah. Um, so, but I don't know, like, who's buying all three of these games or who's buying only, like, two of these games? Like, why separate them like this? Why not just, like, give you the package? That was, that's Capcom being yeah. weird, man. Capcom loves to just make things Com- just so oh, overly God. difficult, complicated, yeah. bundle, ultimate, super turbo, metro, <laughs> infinity de- deluxe. Yeah, I just... Edition. <laughs> I didn't even know there were four two. versions of two. Like, that's... I didn't know weird. either. That's weird. And that, and, and I think, you know, the Street Fighter 2 HD is still out there as well. That was, that was, I, I enjoyed that one, but just random eShop release from Capcom. Way to go. If you want ten versions of the same game, it's your week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, as far as the games we're playing, why don't you kick us off, Aaron? I can kick us off by saying I still turn on Animal Crossing for like ten minutes a day. <laughs> did you take you, like, Did you take a break at all? I thought like I've stopped no. playing and thought thought you were done, so it was okay for me to be done. No, it's the saddest thing. I <laughs> and you were really the only person I ever like. You're the only town I've ever gone to. I've got a few other people on my list. I'm like, yeah, we should you know do Animal Crossing sometime. And then I still haven't met up with anyone. And so I just get on and go through the motions. No, I'll, I'll be quick about this. <laughs> I, get on, I go through the motions, and I buy hats. I, I'm hoping out for some cool hats and items that I think I'll miss if I don't turn it on. Oh. And I get my song. Uh, I get my emote from the club. I get my song from KK every Saturday still. Uh, I, I I don't go to the island. So I've got no a stockpile island. of money. I haven't gone to the island in a while. I was going to say, like, like, what was driving me was the hopes that someday I'd get an apple, which is the only fruit that I was missing. Um, Still no apple. Yeah, so once I kind of gave up on that, and then I realized most of my day, or I was getting in the habit of going to the island every day and just, like, accumulating a bunch of money so I would upgrade things to get new stuff that I would never have enough space for, that eventually um, kind of... It, it, all, all that happened was it took... It took it took me missing two days for me to be like, oh, you know, my town, my town's, my villagers are going to be so mad at me. I don't want to go back. I don't want to deal with the guilt. So I've just abandoned them completely. <laughs> this is why Bones left you. <laughs> he knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> he saw the future. He saw it coming. Uh, and then another quick shout out while I'm on 3DS stuff. Luigi's Mansion. I played that local multiplayer this weekend oh. with my with my friends. I had done it online before and thought it was fun. Local, it's even better. It's the same thing. I didn't even know I had multiplayer. <laughs> yeah, it's got multiplayer, and it's great. It's it's just interesting because, I mean, you're sucking up ghosts together, but there's a bit of a – it's co-op but competitive. You get awards, and the better you do, I think there's a little lottery that gives you bonuses at the end. Hmm. So uh, my friends and I be in the room trash-talking each other, playing Luigi's Mansion. I recommend a 3DS – I, I don't think I've played a 3DS locally with anybody, or barely even a DS for that time. matter. I played yeah. I played some new Super Mario Brothers on the DS right when it came out because a bunch of us at work had it. But yeah, the whole idea of playing 3DSs locally is really foreign to me. <laughs> <laughs> playing games with other people, I can see street, their faces. Street passing. Street passing. 
Yeah, so that was really good, but I would say one of the highlights of gaming in the past week or so, Payday 2. Yes. Was a lot of damn fun, and I wasn't that big, I guess I wasn't sold on the first one, but I didn't play that one right. I got it real cheap on a sale, and I played it with just the AI, and I was like, oh, it's Left for Dead, but I can get tased, and <laughs> oh, <that's> uh, <laughs> I, can, I can shoot this camera out, but... Having some guys together, knowing people will play it, they've refined you know, a lot of the things about it that were just kind of on the janky side before. It's just a lot of fun. There's a lot of variety to those missions. And I think playing it wrong to learn the level and slowly get better at it, that sense of progression, I think it could be very rewarding, especially, I mean, they're re- they are rewarding you still for mm-hmm. failing. So, Yeah, I was kind of happy about that. We, I mean, we did pretty well or got lucky the first few rounds we played, but... When we actually failed and put a lot of time in a mission, I was happy to see that we were at least getting experience and getting some stuff there. Yeah, and the customization, that was missing a lot from the first one. Oh. The mask and the colors, and uh, I guess your little safe house. There's something yep. about decorating your safe house. I hope I can put uh, my little pony posters everywhere. Did, where'd you get the safe house? Do I not know about the safe uh, house? If you, if you do the tutorial when you first start the okay. game, it, it <laughs> asks you... <laughs> So you were probably in a rush to yeah. Get we to just shoot blindly with. jumped into multiplayer. So yeah. So you can always go back to it from the main menu, but it's right there. It's it's waiting for you. You can buy some coasters and throw a party. I did buy a uh, dojo for us in Warframe, so I've been decorate. I've oh, been doing some decorating outside of Animal Crossing and Payday. So it's funny. I, I think that makes a lot of these games better just that weird little bit of interior design i would almost i would almost want to share a, a safe house in that game though like I oh, feel that would like, be nice because that game like i don't want to play that game solo like that's all about having a crew yeah it feels like having i don't know having s- some joint accommodations or something that you're all working to together i guess that would be the one thing is like, they do the individual progression really well and, yeah um but yeah, being able to upgrade the crew, like do things as groups, that could be that could be really really cool. That's a great idea. A whole night crew house. <laughs> I would be all for that. Yeah, well, that wouldn't remain secret for for long. <laughs> Not for long. But yeah, I'm hoping to play some of that very soon. I have started going down like the more technician route. So I the last thing I did was unlock the ability to repair the drill that cracks the safes faster oh cool which would have been very useful the last time we played every time (laughs) yeah every time (laughs) useful all the time and i haven't played since so i'm hoping i can you know really show what i can do next time other than guard the cheesecake and shoot cops (laughs) i'm really good at that shooting i so did does the does the intro that i skipped give us any basis for why we're good guys (laughs) Or are we just we just bad bank robbers? Kind of. A guy talks to you uh, on the phone, and uh, it's weird. Like he, he's like, hey, the phone's ringing. Go answer the phone. And so you start to walk towards the phone. And before you, you even answer it, the guy's like, ah, I knew you were going to the phone. And I'm, I'm on speaker. I, don't, I have <laughs> no idea. It's a weird joke or something. But, yeah, this guy kind of gives you some background on why all of you finely dressed mask-wearing robbers are doing what you're doing. It might have something to do with, wasn't it like a crazy Vlad? I don't yeah. know. It's, it's some weird stuff. Like, you can't be, un- I mean, you can't be undercover, like, because we're, I mean, I killed a lot of cops, man. I, it, it, I was pretty good at it, and it just felt, <laughs> it felt kind of weird. If you, if you think a lot about the game, it's just really, it's a strange world they live in where, yeah, cops can catch you, they can barter um, hostages to mm-hmm. let your guy back out and continue <laughs> killing cops yeah, in, in the middle and, of the battle. That's one hell yeah. of a negotiation. That's yeah. They Come are. on, let a guy back out there. <laughs> he won't hurt anybody. He's he's done with this. He's gonna go home. He only killed thirty five cops. And let him then back out there. When the entire mission's over, like I don't know if this takes place around the world or whatever. If it's all in some kind of just. <laughs> A really archaic city. That's what yeah, the really map archaic. looks. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's just all in one city, but it's just bizarre to know that there are four guys on the loose just murdering so many cops, robbing all the places, and no one can do anything to stop them. 
since this is so um, obviously inspired by the Dark Knight, the intro to the Dark Knight, I, I hope someone, there's got to be somebody out there that has like modded this or the original Payday with like random, randomly Batman showing up. I would, I would, <laughs> that should be like near the end of the game, superheroes start showing up. Like, you know, the cops kind of escalate to, you know, the SWAT team and the FBI come after you eventually. Yeah. But like the next level, Batman shows up and. And you just lose. Yeah. That would be kind of cool, actually. Uh, unless you played the cards right. And then Dude, Batman. I'm saving that. We're, I'm, putting that <laughs> I'm putting that in our pitch notes. Uh, we're coming back to this. Okay. So, Payday 2. I, w- I want to get back into that. But um, Spelunky. Spelunky will happen for weeks to come, I hope. I, I really don't want to give it the Animal Crossing treatment. I want to keep doing these daily challenges. And I've already missed a few. But Slacker. it's... Yeah, I'm a real slacker, but it's <laughs> it's great. It gives it so much replayability that one little daily challenge piece. Because otherwise, I've already beaten the game. I own it on Xbox, and I I don't see myself bothered to try to get the real ending or go the distance yeah. with it. I'm like, I've done enough. I'm happy with myself. Well, but, you you beat it on Xbox. I never even got close. I mean, I still put in it. I feel like I put in you know, like 20 hours in that game. I just yeah. wasn't very good or like. I don't know. You've been watching me play. Maybe I'm focused on the wrong <laughs> stuff. But I don't. I mean, I don't feel terrible. I just feel like very methodical with it and almost to a fault. Um, yeah. But I have no desire to like play that game like hardcore to try to beat it. I'm just enjoying the daily challenges and I don't know that that kind of the sense of community that comes with that when you've got you know right now three or four of us are are going That's through those part. somewhat consistently. Yeah, it's really the best part, and especially no, now that I know. You know these guys who are playing it, and uh, our community, and knowing I have some competitors, some real, you know, giving me a run for the money, so to speak, in this because I I knocked Coop out of the race really fast. Yeah, he me uh, too. he's a little disgruntled. You know, we think we're doing well getting to uh, the jungle to to stage two, and uh, you you're already on level four. That uh, it's kind of frustrating to watch. Yeah, I don't know. but I don't know if he played it. He didn't play it on Xbox though, did he? No, no. This was yeah, yeah. He shouldn't take it so hard. Yeah, we'll get him back into it though. So we'll trick him back into spelunking. We, we need. We'll, we'll show him. So I I put up my first uh, death reel of um of my first week of daily challenges. Fun we'll to sh- watch. We'll show we'll show him that video <laughs> and show him that you know that. It happens to everybody, and uh, especially me, a lot. But um, I'm going to see if I can't... You know, I don't, I don't know how long I'll stick with it. Um, I mean, yeah. I would think at least for the next month or so... That's what I can, I'm thinking. I can, I can definitely knock out daily challenges on a pretty regular basis. So um, I'll stream those, um, you know, probably around 10 p.m. each night or whenever we're finished doing whatever we're doing. And then I'll, I'll put up that those reels each week just because those are, those are kind of fun to put together. Um. Yeah, definitely, definitely fun to watch. Uh, but like I said, I've already played it on Xbox. But there were things I didn't know back then, and part of it's just because I mean, you can just wiki whatever in the world, and it'll tell you everything you need to know. But it's more fun knowing that people are playing this game again and talking about it, and that's how they reveal the secrets. Like I had no idea that that red, kind of pinkish, slimy ball that shows so up in the jungle. Yeah, I had no idea. Well, I knew it, you could stick to it, uh, but I didn't know it was a worm. Why is it? I just thought, oh, I, just, I thought it was a a ball on the wall. I was. Know, I always jumped of... away from it. I saw Ethan. Uh, that's been fun watching other people play it. Like I, I'm assuming when you were playing on the Xbox that you kind of played it in a vacuum, like I did. Like yeah, I would see people's scores, but we wouldn't like being able to watch other people play it. Um, has like I'm learning things. Like you've you've even commented yeah. on some of my live streams, like. I'm 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 picking I'm still picking new things up uh, about like just little little quirks and tricks in that game, um, you know just you know just the fact that you can throw items when you're on the ladder like stuff I hadn't tried before. The the yeah. big revelation for me on the PC version was I finally got the guts to run through some spikes rather than <laughs> I was just so scared to go near them and uh, yeah you can walk through those you can run through them but it's one of my favorite up. parts. Try to think, oh I I learned about the uh, the ghost. Um, um, not the ghost. I- the ghost idol. The ghost idol. Yeah, that, I saw you pick that up. <laughs> yeah, you can picture how that ended. Um, 
what else have I learned? Um, and just seeing the other levels, like I said, I hadn't even been to the ice caverns and what else is beyond that. But um, yeah, that game yeah. is so well designed. It's it's no joke. Like it's easy to um, to think and see all these kind of retro platformers that are out there and not be able to tell some of them apart or be able to tell the really well designed ones, especially because if you are truly harkening back to that retro design style, like um, it's all in the gameplay. And sometimes yeah. that doesn't come through until you have played a ton of it. And um, like every, every time I play it, I just appreciate, appreciate something more about that game just and how, and how evil it is. Like it is, it is it's very, it's awesome. <laughs> I just, diabolical i thought i mean i thought i would you know kind of play it for a few days just for almost a nostalgic pur- purpose since i played it so much on the xbox but i'm i'm having a blast with it it's it's definitely my go-to 15 minute game right now yeah i'm glad to have it on pc I, there's some features i wish were there i wish um online multiplayer existed or online co-op even just any multiplayer i mean it's got local again like the xbox but just can't find yeah. all the people I want to play this with. We're not all in a room together, so I don't even know how, how does the multiplayer even work. Have you dug into it? I've watched it before. I mean, there's the death match, which is just one static screen, and everyone usually dies within five oh. seconds. <laughs> yeah, that's not yeah. Which it's it's funny to watch the first few times, but yeah, but you, stick with that, right? But uh, you can play through the entire game with everyone. And I think you kind of. I think you're all on the same level, but you can break away from each other and just kind of explore all the nooks and crannies okay. individually and then make it to the exit. I forget if, if you die, if you're, you might be do- gone for good if you die. So that's kind of funny or, hmm. you know, it gives you some tension like, hey, you run over there and then your friend falls on spikes. Yeah. I you're think like, um, <laughs> the Vita version is going to have some local co-op or something. It's going to at least have co-op play. So hopefully... Hopefully he rolls that into um, the PC version after the fact. So yeah, that would be nice. And I was just reminded, uh, Verdian, you can uh, when you die, you become a ghost, <laughs> and you can help get your friend killed. So yeah, it gets harder being the last guy alive. Like a full, like the full playing. size ghost. Uh, you become a little ghost of yourself, I think. Oh. So that yeah, if you were a full size ghost, then the game would be over as soon as one person died, probably. But yeah, Spelunky. I'm glad it's on PC. Yeah. I'm I'm glad to enjoy it again with others and learn so much more about what <laughs> I thought I already knew. I thought I was spelunked out. I thought I knew everything. <laughs> but uh, while I was also gone, Rayman Legends had a demo out on the 360, and oh. I had no idea that that game was getting a demo. And I keep forgetting that it's coming out soon. But I always remember that it's no longer Wii U exclusive because yeah. of whatever reason. <laughs> well, that, but comes out, that comes out soon. That Yeah, two weeks, I believe, from God. today. Man, August is just mean. Yeah, August, August takes your money, slips you into September, and says, Hey, hey, <laughs> Rayman Legends. <laughs> <laughs> you know you want this. But I played the demo, and uh, I was enjoying myself. I'm like, oh, it's a really good-looking version of... <laughs> you know, Rayman Origins, yeah. which, unfortunately, I played that on the Wii, so it didn't look all that great, but oh. I had the remotes, so my wife and I could play together, and so I played the first level, it kind of, uh, and that first level kind of introduces you to the gameplay aspect that was, like, touted as being, you know, why you would play on the Wii U, where the person with the gamepad could interact with the background and help uh, whoever is playing normally get through levels, but now you can do all of it yourself, so who cares? <laughs> But uh, it wasn't until I got to a musical level, which took place on a castle rooftop, and you race to the end to Black Betty. It's so good. It's, it's so good. It's so good. And <laughs> I, I went and got my wife, and I'm like, come with me. I've got Rayman Legends downstairs. You remember that game, right? Yeah. Just take this controller from me and play this level. Like, I don't want to show it to her. Yeah. I want to just yeah. learn how I learned it. And it was amazing. And just that one level, uh, we played a little bit more afterwards. I hooked another controller up. We played together. But I, I think I like to think from that first level, she was like, "So what's you know? Are you getting this? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> yeah, are oh, you that, getting this? There's nothing worse than like I mean, 
I think you can relate to, you know, showing off a game to your significant other or to friends that aren't necessarily into games. Um, and then, and then it really hitting home. Yeah. But showing them a demo or like a trailer or something for a game that isn't even out yet and getting them excited, it's both awesome, but also incredibly frustrating. Cause it you really want to like, you want to ride that high and it's like, yes, we'll, we will play a lot more right now. We can. It was the same yeah. thing. Same thing when I showed off that Disney Infinity trailer a couple uh, about a, two months ago. It was just <laughs> that like, was just foolish of you. <laughs> yeah, that's out now too. Yeah, um, yeah. We won't talk about that yet. I haven't bought it yet. That's all you need to know. <laughs> okay, that's what, all I wanted to know. Um, but I was yeah, I was I played that demo when it came out on the Wii U a long uh, a while back, and I was actually I think that demo was out for the release of the Wii U. Probably. And, uh, yeah, that Black Betty. That that just sealed the deal. I want to see what they do with those music levels. I, I mean, I remember seeing trailers for it or seeing the gameplay of it, um, E3 or whatever, and I just thought the music levels were kind of dumb. Like I was like, this is it doesn't yeah. the, it didn't look fun. It looked like everything was on rails. It looked like an endless runner or like it seems that way. Seemed like a you know a tablet game or something. It just I was like, no, this I want Rayman for the challenge and um, you know that sort of thing, but. No, it's just it, it was a blast to play, and I was I was playing it, and it was just one of those things where everything in my house stopped because uh, <laughs> Lily, uh, who's five, picked up on it, and then uh, brought in my my fiance, and they just I mean, Lily was singing it by the by the end of the song, and it was just like yeah we uh, we will be getting this game, but they they loved Rayman Origins too when we got it, so um, I'm really excited for that game to come out. I don't know anyone that doesn't like Rayman anymore. <laughs> Yeah, it's just it's such heartless ah, people. Heartless people. It's such it's so charming mm-hmm. and got like a weird whimsy and to so it. And so French. Yeah, it's I, in I the even best told her. Way. In the I best told her way. this game is made by the French, and she and she had questions for me. She's like, the French make a lot of games. <laughs> I think Ray Man is like one of the, you know, uh, biggest attributes to French cult- culture or big, biggest proponents of French culture in a very long time. Like some wine, croissants, and Rayman. That's it. That's, that's it. all you need to know about the French. But <laughs> that's all we. Probably that's all you do need know. to know. The saddest thing, though, I kind of my only regret to sharing that game with her was the fact that now there is a female like barbarian girl character, mm-hmm. and I liked the way she played. I liked the her control, oh. and she's like, "Oh, I'm gonna pick this one because before I was Rayman, and she was like Globox or whatever you say his name." Yeah, and I'm like. So I'm thinking, oh, when I get this game or whatever, I'll play as the girl. And she's like, well, now there's a girl. I'm the girl. <laughs> and I gave her, like, this look, and there's, like, this silence, you know, of, like, we're, like, testing each other, like, a battle. I and bet <laughs> I bet there are multiple skins for that girl, though. So Probably. To, yeah. Like, you might yeah. get the girl that has a sword instead of the axe or something like that. that. That's fine with me. Although I did like her surfing on the battle axe. <laughs> the run and slide. <laughs> I liked that, but I liked the way she controlled. I used her for the time trial level, so I was I was a little, come on, she's I, mine. <laughs> I forget. Uh, Ubisoft just announced some other game. Um, I think it's uh, it's I forget the name of it now, but it's they're trying to make a Japanese a traditional Japanese RPG, but they're going to use the Rayman animation engine to build it. Oh, nice. So I'm really looking forward to see what else they do with that engine, even outside of Rayman. Just that that's a possibility. Like those games are just gorgeous and they sound great. And, they really are. Um, yeah, really excited about that. So. Yes, yeah, that that's just a great game to look at. I just want to frame it, <laughs> frame it, and hang it over my bed. Uh, but other than that, I'm. Do it, do it. Is it time? Is it time to talk about some Saints Row Four? I think it's time that we talk about Saints Row Four, the the game of the generation. They call it. <laughs> it, it it's a, ah, I can see where they're going with that. Um, <laughs> so I, after some difficulty, I was live streaming that last night, and pe- so some people got to see my reactions. But um, tell me, tell me about your initial Saints Row experience. So I have a friend who works at Volition, and so he knows, like, all the secrets of Saints Row 4, and he was doing a good job of keeping them uh, hidden away. He gave a little a little teasers, little bits and teasers out there, and I'm like, okay, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to like this. I like Saints Row the Third, yeah. and so while you were working through your streaming issues with it, which unfortunately came up, 
<laughs> I decided to go ahead and start the intro before you did. So I played through the entire intro, and uh, I had seen some stuff out there about how the game was, and I had heard about the usage of a particular song, yeah, but not yeah. in what context. Yeah, I'm so glad that didn't have that spoiled. <laughs> Yeah, so I didn't want to say anything even that much to you, but when that moment happened, I I was so happy. I, I yeah, I was I nearly lost it. I'm pretty I'm sure like, uh, it's fun to have that recorded because I'm just sitting there giggling the entire the entire time. And yeah, you that's, were, <laughs> and that is now recorded in history. <laughs> my react, my initial reaction to that moment. It's it's so amazing, and I. I had watched a few of Volition streams where they talked about their audio team and the tricks they did for other parts of the game, but amazing props just to anyone involved with any sound and music <laughs> in Saints Row 4. The way that moment happens, like it's not like you're just listening oh, to crappy oh, music and then yeah. that song just happens. It's, yeah. It bleeds into it, <laughs> and it's so great. It's oh, it's man. like... So going into Saints Row 4, like I kind of do my did my media blackout. Other than like once I knew that aliens were involved in the game, that's where I was like, okay, I I see where the new playground can come from. This this can <laughs> go anywhere. I'm in. And you know, I've only played a couple hours of it, but right now I'm expecting that you know the action side of it. You know, I'm gonna get into those superpowers. Those will be fun for a little while, but eventually, you know, I played a ton of Saints Row 3. I'm gonna kind of yeah. get tired of the action. It's not really. You know, it's fun, and it'll be fun for 20 or 30 hours. I'm not worried about that. But beyond that, I, I just had this feeling that the the writing and the story and the humor uh, were going to be even tighter for Saints Row 4 than in Saints Row 3. And the intro, yeah. the intro at least, has gotten it off to the, on the right start because Definitely. some of the some of the, the story beats to the, the last half of Saints Row 3 were just incredible, and it just feels like they're, they're, they're building off that momentum and... Man, I, I kind of felt bad. I really didn't have much to say on the stream because how can you like make jokes on top of their jokes? Because there's just it's just so good. They will it's, pale. They will pale in comparison <laughs> every time. But uh, um, yeah, the intro uh, was fantastic, and then um, you know those those I finally got into the city and unlocked a couple superpowers. I I, I kind of stated to you in chat. I am a little bit worried about the superpowers. Like yeah. I just. I hope they feel fun. I'm I'm worried about prototype and crackdown like that feeling creeping in a little too much because I'm I'm honestly fine just driving around in cars and blowing shit up. But um, I guess I always still have that option. But I don't know. There was just there's something that kind of uh, put me off about the superpowers. But have you have you been having fun with them? I dabbled in them a little bit before uh, I think you stated to me how you felt about it and. It's weird because on the other hand, I I think it, yeah I'm like the flip side of you. I was a little um, excited to actually try those out, and I've been thinking about prototype and all those other kind of games where you track down, you know, where you get these powers and you kind of just go nuts in a big open environment. I was just thinking, how fun would it be to do that stuff in this Saints Row world yeah. with all this all these comedy beats happening and just developing your character? Because I'm like, if it was Saints Row. Four was just Saints Row the Third with a different story. The story I think is good. The jokes are tight, but I just don't know if I would have wanted to do all of this again in Steelport mm. if there were no superpowers. I feel like the superpowers. But gives at the me same that. time, the superpowers give you an excuse to still be in Steelport. Yeah. So I mean, they they made a smart design. Like if they were sticking with one, this is smart. But um, it was um, you know, I just. I guess my only question about Saints Row 4 at this point is, will I love it as much as I love Saints Row 3? Not that I, mean, I think Saints question. Row 4 will be great and I will love it on its own, but um, um, just yeah, it, it seems to be kind of a mix as far as the reviews I've read of people that prefer one over the other. Some people, sounds like they think Saints Row 4 is just the culmination in the perfect Saints Row game, and um, uh, I'm, yeah. still, I'm more in the core of it's going to be tough to top 3. Like, 3 may have peaked everything and if you're going with superpowers that just feels like um you know doing just the bigger batter sequel to me but yeah uh, not, anyway uh, th i don't want to yeah i'm not trying to be negative or critical it's just <laughs> oh certainly not no I'm, I'm, because the the game will be fun regardless and um, we're gonna play more we're gonna yes. play it tonight there's gonna be a lot of saints row on the site this week so um um i did post the first highlight clip 
I tried to do find something that wasn't um, spoilerish because the intro is so great. Um, but there's kind of a moment uh, where you're <laughs> running around more of like a, what would that be like the the 50s? We're gonna say it's the 1950s that. The like a leave it to around. Beaver era yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, it has the fucking laugh tra- a laugh track, like you're on Leave It to Beaver. I forgot about that. But that was just, amazing. Yeah, this kind of surreal moment where you're you're, you're driving around in uh, like a 1950s town, and it is. Uh, I had a lot of fun uh, trying to get into character, and uh, I I probably <laughs> played that sequence a little too long. But I knew yeah. <laughs> I knew how crazy the game was about to get, so I'm like, I'm just gonna enjoy this environment for what it is because this is this is so surreal that um, uh, I just want to uh, cause a little bit of havoc here here in the '50s. So it was it was it was a, an awesome start. I can't wait to see see more, see how the co-op holds up too. I like I like the way you walk in that sequence too. As soon as you get control of your character. In that part, just that that jaunty step he has, it, it's amazing, and I I didn't see that part coming at all. No, not at all, not at all. It was fantastic. I I mean, yeah, I, some of it's in one of so, the trailers, and I still didn't see it coming. So, um, yeah, I still didn't see it coming. But when it happened, I'm like, oh, it's it's this part. But yeah, <laughs> Saints Row Four, I I love it. I think I love it right now. Yeah. I think it's a safe bet. So I hope it keeps coming. It keeps coming like fast pace and hard like that. I I I'm not worried about that at all. Like I said, like um, I think the story beats are just gonna they're just gonna be really really tight. I think they like almost to a point where it might seem short story wise, but I'm but I'm fine if the if yeah it, if it can keep up the humor the way it is. So, um, what else have I been up Definitely. to? Before Saints Row, I played the ultimate lead-in to Saints Row. Uh, finally checked out DuckTales Remastered. So that got um, a bit of a weird rep last week. Like It really did. Um, like People were really down on it. At least that was the overall tone. And I was really frustrated at reading some of the reviews because... I felt like I knew exactly what to expect from this. I felt like the advertising, everything they were saying about this game, everything they were promoting about this game was incredibly honest to what they were doing. They were upgrading yeah, it was. The, they were upgrading the graphics and they were putting a story into the classic NES game. The gameplay wasn't going to be touched and from what I've played it hasn't been touched and it plays yeah. it plays fine. People were complaining complaining about some of the tightness of the controls and that kind of stuff but you know, maybe if you're getting down on the pixel by pixel level, it's a little bit different. But I thought it, I thought it felt fine. It felt like Ducktales. Felt I, familiar, yeah. I've played, I played it emulated somewhat recently in the last five years to like recognize some of those levels and uh, make sure I knew how it felt. And it felt true to the game. And I just, I don't know what people people ex- expected from it. And it was just kind of. I hate it when people's expectations or their nostalgia builds up a game and they kind of forget what it actually is. And then they, they take it yeah. out. They take out the fact that their nostalgia has built up a game to be something that it wasn't. And they could have discovered like a lot of their angst and anger by just playing the original. Like this isn't Yeah. To me none of this is on way forward. This is they they did what they said they were going to do. And um, you know, the the only fault I've had with it is the story stuff kind of does mess with the pacing of the game a little bit. True, um, yeah. Just like every little item that you come across, they have some dialogue, and it's like, I, I would rather just kind of keep going. Um, but, you know, some of that stuff was still in the game in the original too, but I I guess I just, after all the vitriol I was reading last week, I expected something much more broken. But I was like, no, this is exactly what I expected it would be, and you guys are assholes. That's pretty much how I felt about it, especially after finally being able to play some of it. And uh, I watched a friend finish it over the weekend, but it's it's Ducktales. It's what you, I expected it to be. It's I think it's what people would have ultimately wanted. At no one, if you're gonna call it the remastered game, I don't expect them to reinvent the wheel when it comes to you know how does Scrooge McDuck wind up on the moon and why is he pogo <laughs> sticky? I mean, it's. It's funny that they gave you some story beats as to how they're breathing up there, but yeah, I I thought that was more funny. And then you get back to you know playing Ducktales. This is for people that played that older game 
have yeah. fun with it, and then hey, you could play it in 2013 and not just be playing the old one. I'm I I I'm kind of mad at myself for getting caught up in that and not um not jumping to that game quicker last week. Like I ended up pushing it off until this week, and um you now I probably could have finished it by now and gotten gotten yeah. what I needed out of it. Um, so the game actually starts off with basically a training level where the Beagle Boys are um they've broken into the money bin. And so it teaches you teaches you the ropes, which is really smart because um, I was kind of worried about that that learning curve side of the game in 2013. Um, yeah. And then it it basically sets up so you're in like the his office where you have the computer where you can select what levels you want to go to. But all I will say is the ultimate selling point, and I won't give it away to people that have watched the stream. The ultimate selling point in this game is actually in that room. Like you can. <laughs> when you're looking at the computer screen, you can back out, and there's a couple like highlighted points where you can, you know, do other th- do other things like see concept art and go go through the archives and that kind of thing. But there is a there's another action you can do in the office that um will that will guarantee your purchase of the game. Is all I say. If you like Ducktales at all, yeah. this feature is should make you give them your money. <laughs> Completely validates the entire remaster because <laughs> you could not do it in the first game at it all, was, from what I remember. Yeah. Just a great nostalgic touch. It was, it was, it was right on. So, um, and Scrooge McDuck, actual voice actor. I wish I looked up his name before, but I think I know people were saying that some of the voice actors are like ninety years old. I'm guessing yeah. that Scrooge is one of those. Scrooge guys. is one of them. But um, yeah, seeing him, it, I completely forgot about Gizmo Duck. That was that was presented really well. That was awesome. His AI was a little bit wonky, but um, <laughs> uh, that was exciting. And just you know, I watched a lot of Ducktales, but I've forgotten all of it too. So um, yeah, that that factor. Like, I mean, you kind of wonder like what Disney's impetus was to actually bring this back now. Like, uh, is it kind of a you know? Usually they'll, they'll do HD remakes to kind of test the audience interest in um, you know in a franchise. So. Maybe some more DuckTales? I would like to see some <laughs> other fr- you know, franchises come back. I Chip and Dale's we yep, threw out of there. that's mine. That's Chip mine. and Dale. I said Chip and Dale's. Chip and Dale, <laughs> Rescue <laughs> Rangers. <laughs> G- give me some shirtless men. Leisure Chip and Dale. Chip and Dale's. Uh, Chip and Dale, Rescue Ranger. Or is it Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers? Maybe that's why I'm saying it wrong. I don't remember. Maybe that's going to be in my game pitch. <laughs> How do you say <laughs> this cartoon? Um... I played that game a lot. That was another one I had, and that one had co-op in it. You could be Chip and Dale. Yeah, and I forgot I, about that. And uh, that that led to some interesting uh, discussions between my cousin and myself on who was who. <laughs> because sometimes you want to be Dale, but sometimes you want to be Chip. Dale's kind of silly. I mean, Chip gets stuff done. Chip Dale. has a hat. <laughs> and a jacket. Yeah, he's got like an aviator jacket. And Dale just has his Hawaiian shirt. Da- um... <laughs> We were talking about that as well, just the other Capcom games, and somebody threw out, even though it wasn't Disney, um, the fact that uh, the Tiny Toons game happened to be their favorite. Oh, I like Capcorn, that too. Capcom, Capcom, Capcom. <laughs> we're just messing up two D platformer. Um, but there, and, yeah, that was pretty much the the golden golden age for Capcom, and you know a lot of those games I could I could stand to play them again, even if it's just just the straight port, not even yeah. not even need the HD remakes because I don't know the. I love the um, the the sprites and the 2D animation in uh, Ducktales Remastered, but the polygonal backgrounds aren't really doing it for me. I, I, I don't like the mix, and so it was kind of like I go one or the that. other. Although if you'd done a full polygonal version of this, ugh, uh, uh, no, too. So I think it's all right. I can accept it, but I I definitely don't you know put down the criticism. I I can kind of see it. It just doesn't bother me so much. Um, I can pogo. I think that's all that matters. I think I'm on my own from here on out. We had a lot of like shared games this week, but um, I also streamed some co-op Charlie Murder last week, which I um, caught the end of, and all the connection errors. Or yeah, that was that was kind of frustrating. <laughs> I I don't know if I don't I don't think it was the game. I think that was more of a a local internet issue between uh, Coop and myself. But um, so Charlie Murder, yeah, I um. I wrote a little bit about this in my uh, issue of The Horrible Gamer this week, but uh, I did not like this game for the first hour, which is saying a lot because 
Um, Ska Studios is just one of those developers that I I love their style. I love I love every like little indie game they've produced, and the dishwasher was awesome, even though it was hard as hell and beat the shit out of me. Um, <laughs> and the whole presentation of basically Charlie Murders a punk band and they're trying to prevent the the apocalypse and um, just seemed like and as a four a four player brawler just seemed like yeah I'll play that I'll, that'll be that'll be fun with my friends. Um, the problem is, like I said, with some of these games, I kind of do my little media blackout. I know I'm going to buy it, so I don't want to know more about this game. I know it's a brawler. And I, yeah. thought, I think I thought the game was just much simpler um, than, it, than it turns out it is. And it made me really kind of angry at it. Like, I just wanted, I wanted the menus to get out of my way. I wanted to just go in here, fight a bunch of, like... Uh, anarchists or whatever and and <laughs> and just beat up the streets and and get some special moves and rip dudes heads off and just you know um basically you know play a, a a mosh brawler but it's you know then you start to figure out that like it has this whole menu menu system and upgrades that are all controlled by your phone that you know you have yeah you have email you have twitter you have your skill upgrades uh, i forget what the other direction actually is um and then you actually you actually have inventory to the point where i was like okay we got inventory got to manage some items here i was like then later you you start to figure out this isn't just inventory this is straight up loot there are there there are ra- randomized items that have you know elemental properties and you would kind of mix and ma- match your gear to level up your character and like it affects your fights and yeah it was really I like it was kind of like I didn't want that stuff to be there at first, but once I like let go and just stopped fighting with myself, I was like, no, this is the game that it is. I started having a lot of fun. Like once I figured out how to navigate the menus, and I don't know, it just. But it took me a while to adjust. And but by that point, you know, I'm putting on a bunch of different loot, putting on some funny hats, putting on some funny shirts and gloves, and Coop's giant drummer is cracking me up just because he's so big and dumb. He's so you're doing, huge. <laughs> you're doing your mosh pit tag team moves and uh you know it's just boss fight after boss fight um i don't think i don't think you should play this game by yourself i think it'll be much too much of a grind but um once it was clicking and once the you know once my internet connection issues uh were cooperating game was a lot of fun so by the end of it i loved it but it just took me a while to get there yeah i played the trial over and over again after watching you guys play and i kind of, i really regretted that well, I don't want to say I regretted that my friend had to have a rehearsal dinner and I couldn't be there to play True. games. Come on. <laughs> but I regretted that I didn't have the the game already purchased, so I could have just hopped in there towards the end and join up with you guys because I tried out every single character in the demo and I was like, I feel like this is a game I would enjoy and I'm trying to think of all the reasons why shouldn't I? I'm like, oh, it's $10, you know, Brothers was 15 yes. And so this one's cheaper. <laughs> yep, yep. And but I'm like, but I've got Dragon's Crown. I'm like, but I can't play it while I'm out of town because yeah. I don't have my PS3. And... Well, actually, we were um, – Jordan was in chat, and he's been playing a lot of Dragon's Crown and was – at first, I was kind of defending the game. I was like, you can't compare this game to Dragon's Crown. Like, you know, VanillaWare has their team of artists. James and Michelle, uh, uh, they do their own thing with – they yeah. do, you know, their two-man shop. And, you know, and then, you know, Dragon's Crown was trying to be this, like, deeper brawler RPG hybrid, and um, and then, <laughs> and I was like, no, you know, this is going to be much simpler, it's going to be much more straightforward, you can't judge on the same level. And then it turns out, like, this thing kind of wants to be a little bit of an RPG, too, and yeah. it's definitely lighter, much, much lighter than Dragon's Crown, um, but um, it, you know, it does have a little bit more of a learning curve than um, you kind of anticipate out of a brawler, like... When you think, when I think of brawlers, I think of Final Fight, and I think of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the arcade game, pumping some quarters, just jump in. You don't yeah, even know anything about the game, and it doesn't really have that quality, which I think will put off some people. But I think if you get into it, uh, there's a lot to love about it. So, and the music's awesome. <laughs> the music is really it's it's some catchy stuff, and I think the soundtrack is up. Uh, we have a link to it or something on the site. Yeah, it's, I think it's so. a pay pay what you want soundtrack as well. I'm I'm kind of interested. I might have to pick that up and uh, play and Char- it. Charlie's special move is he's the singer, so he just like screams at dudes, <laughs> just and, wails. And one of his screams is poisonous, and that that cracked me up. So, 
Uh, but yeah, I look forward to uh, finishing that when we can get a couple more guys online. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to play that um, by myself, and I but I also I don't want to review it until I've played it with a clear connection to see if that's if that's a game issue or if that's a um, that's a, a personal network issue. So yeah, so I might grab it. Yeah, hope um, you get a review out. Because <laughs> <laughs> I need to do that too. No, we need some. We need some. Uh, well, we need some reviews, but we need we need more bros to finish that game. We need more bros. Let's see. And then I played a lot of Skyrim again. Like I, I keep starting my Skyrim st- streams later and later. But yeah. I, I still played it for like three hours the other night after starting after midnight. So um, continuing the Dark Brotherhood quest line and. Um, you know, I kind of hit the point where, you know, I've been trying to juggle this in Earthbound, and um, I kind of had the choice last week. Like, we had other new games to play, so one of these had to fall off, and I was kind of surprised I went with Skyrim. But, like, you know, if I was just kind of playing casually, this is all I would play. Like, I really enjoy streaming it for everybody and yeah. uh, playing in those sessions, so I'm going to keep that up. But, like, it's kind of hard for me to not play it. Um, you know, just for like 15, 30 minutes offline, but I've, so far I've only played it all online. Um, and then, uh, I, there's a couple clips I'll put up, but you know, the funny stuff that's happened is just like weird geometry stuff that I run into with trying to sneak around corners and shoot arrows. That part's great. (laughs) Vampires continue to just like be everywhere. I don't like, I wish, I wish I knew how much the vampires are around in vanilla Skyrim. Like, I don't know how much of this is Dragonborn content, but... Yeah, I'm curious about what's going on there, because I don't have, a uh, Whatever, Dawnguard, I don't have that one. Yeah. But I don't remember seeing so many vampires when I played but through I, Skyrim proper before. But there were... Yeah, and I keep running into them. Like, it, but this one was, like, through a Dark Brotherhood mission as well. So you knew that, that that's part of the vanilla package. And then, um, I had a really, really badly botched assassination. Like... Killing, killing some lady in <laughs> in the city in front of all everybody, and then trying to run run out of town. And uh, so, like, I was being pursued by the guards, and every time I'd round a corner, like a flood of new a new set of guards would come after me, and I'd have to run further and further away. And every time I'd run away, I'd run into something else in the world, like whether it be a vampire, giant spiders, or of course, as soon as I am away from these guards, a dragon shows up. And um, <laughs> and a dragon is a guard too. <laughs> yeah, that was. Uh, it was it was it was pretty pretty humorous. But um, I've got to I've got to switch things up. I uh, you know I've gotten my archery skill up pretty high, but that's the only thing I do. And I I'm at the point like I'm at level twenty now. I need to have more than one strategy in in a, in a battle because I just yeah I use my arrows to a fault. So I've got to start to figure out: Am I gonna you know Am I gonna focus on my one-handed weapon or am I going to go with magic to try to push these dudes away? So I've, uh, I've been fumbling a lot more than I've intended. So I need to make some decisions and not only use my bow now. So, um, but yeah, um, that kind of brings us into kind of what we're streaming, what we're working on. Um, what are you working on Aaron? What you, you started to review. What do you think? What do you think's <laughs> in your review, review queue? My review queue. Uh, I've started a review a, a couple weeks back, and it's it just a reflex one of uh, I, when I talked about Tele Glitch, and I need to finish that because I haven't played it since because of other you know life things and other games coming out. But my opinion of the game really hasn't faltered, and I haven't forgotten how it is. So I sh- I need to push that review out. Uh, but then I'm hoping to maybe get some other reviews in of just as all these games hit us. Just get some more reviews out, and uh, I, I spent a lot of time just kind of beating myself up because Ethan's got all, he, the time in the world or something because he gets the reviews out. He got the Spelunky review out, which is one of my favorite games, but not that not that it can't be anyone else's favorite game. You cannot review it too. It's not I, allowed. <laughs> but yeah, he's already he's reviewed it. But I feel like most people who know the site know me already know how I feel about Spelunky. So uh, that's the review right there. I. Fucking love Spelunky. So, <laughs> six out of ten. Oh, cool! That was easy. <laughs> Three was out a lot five. less word, a lot less wordy than some of the things you usually write. Yeah, 
<laughs> it's, it's also very contradictory that I decided I love it, but I give it a 3 out of 5. <laughs> um, so I'm just hoping to get more reviews out there that make sense. And at least stream once a week. I would like to do that. And um, I've been kind of lucky in the last few weeks that the days I can stream have been very consistent. And there was the week I had uh, all five days of the, you know, the week off. kind of crazy. Yeah, so I... Re- that was a lot was- of Aaron. There was a lot of me that week, a lot of binary domain, pedo test. You should write something up on binary domain. You mean you did, you did finish I could. the game. I did. Yeah, I finished the game a lot faster than I thought I would after how long it sat in the backlog, and I forgot it existed. Just, just write down your true feelings about monkey bots. <laughs> I hate monkey bots. I, I, I like them more than I like Rachel and uh, what's his stupid face. Or, or write up Charlie. your thoughts on... Yeah. The active, what do you want to call that? Active dialogue feature of that game, or whatever you want to call it. that was that was. Yeah, has it, have you ever played a game that's done that? I can't like the re- reacts to your voice like that. I've that's so uh, random. I've not played a game that really reacted to your voice in the way that that one does, and it's because we need to like, find all of them and live stream all of them so we can but, confuse yeah, the game. They need to be just played. They're meant to be played online in front of an audience just because of me reacting to people typing in chat and in the game thinking I'm calling everyone an idiot. And so <laughs> I'm trying to maintain my friendship with Big Bo and just, you know, talking to the viewers gets him all upset with me. <laughs> he's so sensitive. Yeah, and he's like asking me questions. It's not like, all about you, Bo. <laughs> he's like, hey, check that girl out. What do you think about her? And I turn to talk to the chat, and he's like, oh, you, you don't like her? Oh, okay. And he's like d- disappointed in me that I'm not, you know, broing out with him. And I'm like, big <laughs> Bo, I was talking to someone else. Gosh. So God, big Bo. Uh, but yeah, I, I'll write something about Binary Domain. I can do that. That, that was an interesting game to play. <laughs> while using the microphone for other purposes. <laughs> well put. Well put. <laughs> but yeah, uh-huh. I'll I'll try to get at least one stream in and of course I've got the one coming up this week. We'll probably do some payday and, and if not yeah. uh I might Saints Row, do yeah. my Spelunky run. I'll do whatever. I'll play all the games. All of them at once. All of them at the same time this Thursday. Um let's see. So yeah, um Basically, we're working on our streaming rotation. Aaron's up and running. Uh, you've seen Coop up and running. Believe it or not, he's still out there. He's actually at um, uh, GDC Europe right now while Ethan's at Gamescom. So that's why we're a little bit light this week. But but Andy, our our buddy Mangler103, has stepped up. He's He was on our podcast last week. Um and he'll be streaming from time to time. He's going to do his first stream this Wednesday. Uh, he's really into Saints Row, so he'll be taking people more through the solo campaign. Um, and then you'll probably see more of him. Um, he and Jason Thompson, who's been on our Night Force podcast, uh, they're the guys behind the Evolution and Gaming podcast that uh, you'll see us promote from time to time. Uh, Mondays and Fridays are those, or Tuesdays and Fridays are those episodes. Um, so that's where those guys uh, came from. And uh, so you'll be seeing them more on the stream. The, the goal being that we have uh, at least daily gaming streams for, for everyone. And uh, so we'll start to kind of spread that around and spread the games around a bit. I, like I said, I'm still working through Skyrim sticking around. I will finish Earthbound as well. That'll probably return. Fuzzy uh, pickles. Ne- <laughs> that will return <laughs> next week. Um, I've been playing that mainly on Tuesdays, and then Skyrim is my weekend game. Um and then I think um, I can pretty much commit to doing a, a game curious either a Sunday night or a Monday night. I'll do one. I'll kind of juggle those um, where I, you know, I tend to pick up an indie game every week. And um, you know, right now I've got Sir, you are being hunted in the queue. Um, and then we're going to be playing some Dive Kick tonight. And I'm, there's just always something, something in my backlog or something that I've picked up. Um, that I will try out, and uh, those have been fun just to try games, and then I end up playing whatever after the fact. So, look for um, Monday or Sunday night sc- streams for me um, on a weekly basis. Um, beyond that, um, I'm also as soon as Ethan is back from Gamescom, we're gonna go heavy into our planning for the charity marathon. Yes, uh, which will be 
probably sometime in October or early early November, depending on what weekend it works out, uh, because we're going to try to convince Aaron to come down and play. He just doesn't know that yet. Um, I thought it was coming. <laughs> I'll but, try to uh, make it work. Yeah, if we can get it get it out there, uh, we're we're planning some big some bigger things around that more than just games, uh, more than just playing games. So, um, but and then trying to get you know uh, Cole and Ethan, the guys from from out of town, uh, more involved as well. Um, and then we're also going to do. Uh, Josh has promised some Gen Con coverage. He and I will do a Gen Con podcast sometime here in the future. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Plus. He actually said he's going to write something for the site. I know he took a lot oh of photos boy. at Gen Con, but um, uh, you might see some more kind of tabletop coverage uh, on the site from time to time from him, uh, which would be a good way to get him back involved because he's pretty excited about that stuff. Um, and then nice. uh, this week, be on the lookout for random Gamescom coverage from Ethan. He put up a, a video on our Facebook page, but... Uh, He's he's on the ground getting scoops right now. Well, he's probably sleeping right now, but in the morning. <laughs> um, so Sleepy we'll get scoops. we'll get some of his uh, reactions from the show on the site, as well as I'm sure Night Force next week, or even an additional podcast to just talk about Gamescom in general. Because uh, Microsoft and Sony were all about their new consoles uh, today in the news, so uh, we'll recap that and. Uh, um, you know, that's, that's heating up. Sony's got a delivery date for the PlayStation 4, so, uh, I guess a launch date would be more accurate, but... Uh, <laughs> it's gonna be born soon. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, we're about out of here, but let's talk about some game pitches. Um, what you got? Uh, so, uh, watching that Gamescom stuff kind of got me thinking about uh, the Xbox One and how the Kinect... Uh, used to be integral to the system, and <laughs> now it is no longer that way. But if it had still been, I think a perfect game would have been getting a team like Double Fine together, maybe partner with the government to make Connect's Trolling Party, in which uh, you start off with a series of mini games, like doing simple stuff like uh, they flash a number on the screen, you know, put that many fingers in the air. And it just gets increasingly weirder and maybe more personal as the games go on to see how far you want to go. But that they like pressure you, like they're, they're tricking you. They want you to win, but then they're like, "Hey, you know, put your social security number, okay. <laughs> you know, and know where you're going with that. Flash that up here, or hey, you two, take your clothes off and then switch clothes, and then um, you know, repeat the sentence, you know, for maximum points. And the sentence is maybe like an admittance that you want to assassinate the president or something like that. Yeah, you were, th- you were thinking along the lines I was, because, like, basically tricking, using the Kinect to, like, set off all the NSA's al- al- alarm bells. Yeah, all of the you. sirens. Um, until, yeah, the, like, almost kind of flash mob the thing, just make it so everybody plays this game yeah. and... Everybody is reading about Hitler and are now on the uh, the watch list, and it just like blows up their system to the point of one, it outs that the connects actually being used for this, and then uh, brings all of it crumbling down. That would be that <laughs> yeah. would be one like progressive way to use the connect for sure. I think so. Like it, it would just do all sorts of just weird things like that. Like oh, to get the most points, you know, who can go to, to Amazon.com and then search for a backpack and a pressure cooker the fastest? <laughs> you know, who can Jeez. look up? You know, who can look up how to make a bomb? You know, in in a minute. It, oh man, that um, we were actually talking about at work, trying to use papers please, uh, use the connect to make a papers please game. Um, <laughs> that would be great. Except, except like. Basically hinging around the fact that it can take that that body shot of you and that oh. whatever and that image is really kind of creepy and kind of looks like the like the body scan images that they post in that yeah, game it is. It and is. yeah let's just make all these connect games that make people even more uncomfortable with it um, <laughs> if the connects could just shoot through your clothes so the goal here would be that you are a Xbox One developer that's releasing like launch window games, but your goal is to make a Connect game that makes it so Microsoft no longer packs in the Connect. Yeah. <laughs> so you have your NSA game, you have your your Papers Please game that takes awkward photos of you, 
Um, what else are we scared about with the Kinect? Um, it's got to do something where it's like recording video and playing it back to you at random times. Um, oh, yeah. It should do like a, a nanny cam of some sort. Of just Yeah, like in the middle of... Uh, if Maybe you log into your profile and you do stuff and the Kinect is recording you and it, somehow you know it can filter through the most interesting points in your playthrough and then someone else logs into their profile is playing a game, it just pauses it, brings up a video player and shows you some just awkward thing that happened <laughs> during the time when you were playing. It's like, hey, you know that guy you live with or whatever? Yeah. You know, he, here's it's, what he was doing at 1 a.m. last night. It's it's uh, launch, your, launch your own Kinect blog. And it just, <laughs> like, every time you log into it, it's like, do you want to use this footage we captured? And it's just some random time when somebody was in front of it, and it's just some super awkward clip that no one really ever wants to see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, what else? Uh, that's... Or it would be funnier for like the teenagers out there that play it. You know, if, if the connection was always recording, and let's say like there was a moment where the kid's at school and his mom was like cleaning the room and she had to bend over to uh, to clean something, and he gets on, he's like, "Hey, here's what's happening while you were gone. Just a shot uh, of his just... mom's ass." <laughs> nothing, nothing, will, nothing will send that connect back faster than mom ass. <laughs> Take a bat to it in the driveway. Make Kinect games to get rid of the Kinect. Uh, what did I jot down? Oh, I was trying to advance that, um, the payday thing to incorporate superheroes, but that's kind of serious. Um, <laughs> co-op Spelunky. What else were we talking about? Chat, you got any? Feel free to throw something out. Um, uh, a real Chippendales game <laughs> where shirtless men. Have oh, to actual make... Chippendales! <laughs> yeah, have to go on a journey. I'm surprised they didn't make a a, a Magic Mike Connect game. That seemed like a you know that... they've got enough Let's Dance out there. Let's uh, yeah, that would go been for a, a good different one. crowd. <laughs> record <laughs> those record those videos for your wife. I'd play that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean Channing Tatum teaches you how to move and take your shirt off. <laughs> Also, what else is Harmonix doing with that franchise? Um, actually, that's kind of weird. Like, I was thinking about that. The fact that they... Um, if they, you know, Microsoft reversed the whole Connect being required to be online to, to use it. Yeah. and uh, Or connected to use it, to use the Xbox One. And um, I started thinking about, you know, Harmonix is still, like, you know drowning in connect games right now they are they're like betting heavy they on fantasia and um if if they take that away that's uh that's kind of interesting um bat genocide the game so we ooh, what about that okay okay we can i still want to make a batman game out off of off of payday so because really yeah. if you think about it if that's based off if payday is based off of the the dark knight the dark knight then you're playing as a thug in the Joker's gang. And getting skillful enough that you can actually bring Batman down um, in a coordinated bank heist type of way. Like, coming up with plots to actually take down the superheroes. Like, that could be a actually a really badass co-op experience if you're playing the villains. Because there was something... There, I mean, that's that's the other draw to Payday, is just, like, that, yeah. that villainous side of it. And... Um, They've, they've managed to, you know, the style of the game makes it not seem as evil as it is. Um, you know, it's a little bit casual in the way it presents everything. But, I mean, honestly, some anti-superhero games would, that would be kind of cool. That's what's kind of missing from Payday 2. I think we talked about it is that that element of screwing over your teammates to get like a bigger cut. But if <laughs> you kind of had Batman in the equation, um, and we I think it's long enough ago that Dark Knight came out that yeah. we could say like, you, everyone is a pr- different person, but let's say that at a certain point, like you want to co, you want to cooperate with your teammates, your fellow thugs enough to advance the heist. But mm. at a certain point, you know Batman is going to show up, and so sacrificing whoever, them. Yeah, you want to start sacrificing each other, like to get more of, of uh, the loot. But then maybe you also become the Joker that way, which gives you uh, a standing chance. It might need to be fleshed out a little bit more, but. 
you know, someone's going to turn out to be, like, the Joker or, you know, the Riddler, just some some super villain. Like, somehow you become the super villain, but maybe oh, it's, wow. it's competitive. So you all turn on each other to try to become the villain and get the chance to take down Batman. That'd be kind of that'd be kind of wild, like because the I mean that's kind of I think the in some of the stories Joker basically starts out as kind of just you know the common thug criminal, yeah. So um, to become the supervillain that way, I, I still I like I like the aspect of being able to still have that that co op experience to bring down a superhero is kind of cool. But but yeah, some some sort of mastermind element to it would be. It would be neat. Or it could still work. It could be that maybe, you know, the four thugs can go up against Batman as a group, but just that in the back of your mind, you know, if you start sacrificing people, you can yeah. maybe become the supervillain and be strong enough to do it on your own. But like, <laughs> if you shot one of your guys and then everyone realizes, hey, this guy's trying to turn us and they shoot you, you know, it's that you don't get the opportunity. But then that leaves like down to two and they're like, do I shoot my friend now? Yeah. <laughs> or do well, we work together? Risk re- risk reward around the honor among thieves would be kind of That could be an interesting an game. An interesting game mechanic for sure. Yeah. Cool. That one's well, free, that- devs. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the most serious we've gotten with those. About time. <laughs> but And do um, it with Chippendale's dancers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's going to do it for Night Force tonight. Aaron, thanks for jumping on, buddy. No problem. I, I want to get back to Saints. We'll, we'll get there. Uh, chat, thanks for hanging out tonight. Um, we will be back with Night Force next week. We'll see you.